You have a beautiful knack for creating scenes. What is your philosophy for creating a scene? Um, thank you. I, I mean, in terms of creating a scene, I guess it's, there's something so exciting in a scene when you feel, when you feel things change, you know, when you feel, when you feel like we started at this one point, I mean, the, in a very analytical sense, the scene has to have a shift, you know, something has to change in the scene, right? And people have to want something. But for me, it's really much about, about that moment when people are either realizing what's happening, you know, and coming to, starting to come to terms with it, or, or they're, you know, surprised by something, whatever it is, but I'm, it's such a, it's such a hard thing because I feel like so often in scenes, I'm just, I am just trying to explore it all these different ways, you know, or just like see what happens and try and land, like arrive at that moment. You're almost spinning your wheels as you're writing, you know, until you get to that moment of, oh, but then this thing is going to happen. Like this, the point of the scene has to occur and Gosh, it's such a hard thing to. T Give me one second to think. About yeah, it. sure, no yeah. problem, no problem. I mean, I, it's funny because I, I, my process for writing is so weird to me, or it seems like different for than a lot of other people. Which is, I do so much exploration on my own, and almost by the time I have all my most important scenes, and I'm looking at them critically, I take them for granted. You know, like for granted that they exist, um, and so then it's like, okay, well, this is like a, like a C level scene because it's a first draft. And now I have to try and figure out how do I escalate it and, and build it up. Um, but I think for me, I think the big thing, and it goes through all of writing, but especially at scene is just trying to initially live with the characters and, and try and feel like whose head are you in? Whose perspective are you in? And like try and go on the journey with them in real time where you're, you're, you're kind of like laying down the, you know, like the planks on the walkway of the scene as you're going because you have to write it. But that experience of, of trying to go through it with someone, you know, with the, the main character. And I think that's the biggest thing for me in a scene is like, is like, who am I with? Whose POV am I in? And, and how do I kind of weave through it in that way? And maybe later it needs to have two point of views or something like that. You know, um, maybe that's the best version of a scene. But I think in terms of exploring it initially, it's just what's the experience that they're having and then try and kind of document that so that you get the, the feeling of the changes that are occurring in the scene. Because um, hopefully you have some idea starting out, something has to happen in this scene, right? And just building from there. And did Matthew Modine get to meet Greg? He did. Oh, he did. Yeah. Okay, great. And so Greg was on. He was on our set most of his time, actually. Okay. Wonderful. Which which could have been challenging or it could have been trouble in a way, but but it wasn't because it was just you know you could have if Greg was a different type of person he might have said well it wasn't like this it was like that all the time, and that's just not who he who he is or who he was. Um, and so it was great because he could give a lot of he could tell real stories. He could he could weigh in at times. You know there were times when. The boys' conflict would escalate, like like when it's supposed to escalate, they're supposed to kind of maybe kind of get in each other's faces, and you know the actors they're all kind of living it. I give people a lot of one. It was hard to manage five people, six people in every scene, so it's giving everyone a lot of freedom to just live their character's truth, whatever you want to call it. And so there were times when um, things would escalate between like the Wilbright character and the Atencio character, and I would think mm, I, I should probably reel that back. Like that just went too, it went too big, it's too much. And Greg would, I, I would just, was just thinking it to myself and Greg said at the end of the take, oh, that's just what these boys were like. That's, that feels so real. Wow. So then I have a context, okay. It, it isn't just like a, some dirty looks here and there. It's like they're really getting up in each other's faces and they need to be separated and pushed away and all this stuff. And, that, um, and that's where it goes, you know? Right, right, the chaos of, of sort yeah. of some of the, baggage was was coming to the forefront right yeah, that's awesome yeah wow. yeah though the scenes were super strong and and I never felt like like I I wondered with whether these were boys from the program right right the dialogue felt so real to me 
Uh, I didn't feel like it was just, you know, forcing someone from a casting agency to yeah. sort of fit a certain type. So I felt like they really embodied the characters. No, thanks. And it's a, it's a credit to them and too. And we like we had a lot of, um, you know, let, letting them the space to improv and stuff because if we were going to write what every character said to every little thing, you know, the script would be 30, 40 pages longer. And so that economy of screenwriting, which you have to have, you also have to sort of give a little bit more, in a movie like this at least, a little more um, just agency, I guess, to your actors to to find their own little comments or own little lines here or there when it makes sense. And that, that would add a level of authenticity too. Sure, and I think too some of the stuff that was unspoken was the lack of trust, which mm -hmm. is understanding that someone that comes from that environment is going to have a lack of trust. And then Greg trying to get them back and and maybe not super win their trust, but just let's get back and yeah. let's go forward again. So I thought that was wonderful too. Yeah. So oh, sometimes thanks. it was what, what wasn't said. Yeah. Um, which is just as important. Do you have any rules for writing a great scene? I mean, I think I think the biggest rule is is like don't overstay your welcome. You know, really, and it's more like a rewriting thing. But just really try not to overstay your welcome and try and think about how force yourself to think about how it fits in the movie as a whole, you know, I think is, is the, is, is the rule to kind of follow and, and remember that, you know, a movie is a series of scenes and a series of moments. And so kind of, I think the rule is just force yourself to, to get in as late as possible and get out as early as possible and really think about, just really think about like, is this, is this a scene we, we live in? Is it a landed scene, you know, or is it a scene that is get trying to get us somewhere else, you know, as part of a bigger part of the story? And um, I don't know if it's like a rule per se, but but that I think is a is part of the process. And when you're writing, do you know that you're writing a great scene, or that won't even happen until you get it in front of actors? Um, I would say sometimes when writing especially if it's something that's sort of action oriented, you know, or something like that, you can kind of feel like you're getting the experience of it, you know, or if it's, or if it is like a dialogue scene, you can get the experience of, of like, okay, I'm seeing the back and forth. I'm seeing the sort of um, conflict play out and, and that can be fun. But there's definitely scenes where, I mean, in Hard Miles, there were several scenes where I didn't feel very confident in the scenes, like really crucial scenes, um, like a scene later in, the, in late in the movie where all four of the boys, you know, it's it's comes to a head of like, are they going to go, are they going to go off on their own, or are they going to go um, kind of follow in Greg's footsteps? And you know, it was a scene I I really didn't have much confidence in um, on the page. You know, it felt a little bit. It was one of those things that had been rewritten many times. You know, kind of taking, putting on the, putting on the sort of um, like logical hat to say, okay, actually, it should be this character does this, this character does that. It felt a little bit mechanical to me, um, at least in the process of writing it. And then when all four, when we're auditioning those, you know, those four boys plus plus, you know, the sort of the runners up for the for the for those roles, seeing them do the scene was when I went, oh, this scene might be good, actually. Like, the, you know, because they brought not just the mechanics of it, not just this character does this or does that, and this is, this is the culmination of their arc or whatever, you know, which feels so dry. Um, they brought all the emotion and all of the realness to it that, that wasn't um, packaged, you know, and, and like worked over. It was just immediate and real. And so that's, that's the exciting thing. And, and what we kind of feel like is like, okay, well, they saved, you know, they saved us from something that, that shouldn't really work as well as it does because they're bringing all of their magic to it. And, and that's, the, that's the exciting thing, I think, about directing and, seeing it and putting the script aside and just seeing, okay, what, what is it at its, at its essence? And, and trying to zero in on that more on the day. Is the best scene that you write always the best scene in the movie? I think I think no. You know, I think um, I think there's such different things because writing is 
ultimately does have to become so technical, you know, and I think like if you're open to the nuances and things that come through, if you know, if you're writing a movie, which is what, you know, we're talking about, it is going to be the unspoken things often that come through and add a layer onto something. Um, and it's often the scenes that you really pull things away from that, that have that where a scene was, was kind of maybe overwritten or weak, but it was giving the actor and giving everyone sort of, here's the ammunition that you need to pull this off. And then, and then you take away all the stuff that's extra, um, that would make people kind of cringe or go, oh, no one would really say that or whatever. And then maybe you have something great that's unspoken and, and just feels real. And I think that's kind of the weird magic of it. Um, and a lot of times we would have, we have a thing, Christian and I, because we've worked together where I edited for him too, and now we've written two scripts together. We just have a short answer, just clever, not funny. You know, especially when we're writing comedy, it's like wordplay and all these things. Things can be clever on the page and you go, oh, that's kind of nice, that's cute. And just once people are saying it, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a waste of time, honestly. Because uh, no one's gonna laugh, it's not surprising. You know, comedy is the surprise and truth. And so that kind of thing where you'd have something that feels clever on the page and then, and then when you're watching it, it just sits there. It doesn't, it doesn't go anywhere. And so you have to kind of separate those two, I think, the, like the written word. And I guess if, if you're a, a really sophisticated enough writer, then, then you'll just identify that right away. And maybe you can write a scene that you know, this will be the best scene in the movie, even though no one thinks so right now on the page. But I also think that would require some kind of level of clairvoyance that, you know, we don't really have. Sure, sure. They don't teach that in screenwriting. Right. <laughs>